Hello, Forecaster here again, and in this video, we are going to look at the token system. As you can see, we have a three way two lane intersection here, which is a design I've used in previous videos. And you can see that it is intelligent. It's only letting one train uh, into the intersection at a time. So, but you'll also notice that there aren't any signals. So it doesn't keep track of the lengths of tracks inside of the intersection. So what a token system is, is when a train passes by one of these points here, either this one, this one, or this point here, the train is being handed a token, uh, conceptually. And as long as that token is being held by a train, no other trains are allowed into the intersection. And once a train passes by one of these checkout locations, which include this one, this one, and this one here, the token is being handed back and a can be handed out to another train, which will be let into the intersection. Now, nothing is actually being given to the locomotives. There's no item being passed or a value being set in the trains. What's happening is we have a circuit up here and here we have a simple RS latch built with vanilla blocks and an RS latch has two states either this side is powered these two blocks here or this side is powered and the way to toggle this is powering these blocks here so as you can see when this side receives a pulse this turns off and this turns on. And when this block receives a power pulse, this side turns on and this turns off. And these two cannot be powered at the same time. They are exclusive. And this represents our token. When this side is powered, the token is handed out. And when this side is powered, the token is available and not uh, in use by a train. Now before we go over how the rest of the system works, we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of using this system. In a previous video on intersections, I used signals to cover, uh, I used multiple signal blocks to cover the intersection and keep track of when there was a train inside of it. And when all the blocks are cleared, the intersection is cleared and another train is let in. Now the advantage of that uh, will be obvious shortly. One of the disadvantages is that you need to make sure that the train inside of it is in one of the signal blocks all the time. If it leaves one of the signal blocks, if you have a gap somewhere, um, the system is going to think that the area is clear and let another train in. And one of the places that this can happen is these bits here. Say a locomotive turns like this one, if it's only one cart, if you haven't covered this bit here with a, uh, a couple of signal blocks, when the locomotive is here, it's not going to be registered by one of the blocks. And the system is then going to think that the area is clear or that the intersection is clear. So either you have to cover this bit with a signal block and have a relay here to cover this bit here or just have multiple signal heads um, 
which makes it more expensive because you require more blocks, of course, and more uh, more block signals. Or you have to make sure that the train is long enough so that it intersects intersects either this block that covers this track here or this block that covers this track here and doesn't leave both of them uh, unoccupied so that it is still registered as in the intersection. Compare this to the token system where we have the token being handed out here and once the token is handed out to a locomotive it doesn't matter where it goes um, all that matters is that the token is returned at some point when it exits the uh, the uh, the area you want to control so we have a pretty simple setup here with a small intersection which has three definitive exits but if I were to um, say I was to disable this exit here now the blue locomotive is going to head out of the intersection but if we stop this here when it passed by this exit checkout here it didn't power this um, controller box so the token wasn't handed back so this locomotive technically or conceptually still holds the token and the system since the token is not available it won't let these locomotives here into the intersection uh, and it will keep everything it will stop anything from entering until it gets the token back which will only happen when something passes by an exit checkpoint so if one of these fail for any reason uh, and the token isn't handed back and this locomotive goes off and well even if it tries to come back so it will also be stopped because the system can't tell that this is the locomotive that was in the intersection because it doesn't actually have a, an actual token because it's conceptual um, so all the system knows is that the token is checked out so it won't let anything into the intersection so this can happen either because uh, a creeper blows up one of the check the uh, exit circuits or checkout circuits or you just fail to account for an exit and a uh, a train slips out of the area without checking out and then heads off to another destination and doesn't come back in quite a while which will hold up anything else that tries to enter the area the advantage is that you can control a very complicated rail setup without having to cover all of the blocks uh, in the signal blocks or all of the tracks in signal blocks uh, for example these bits here or if you have a station area um, that contains a lot of complicated uh, s uh, snaking rail all over the place and you only want a locomotive to enter at a time and not want to cover the entire thing in signal blocks um, you could also have a counter uh, which would be made easier if you have a mod such as Project Red which has a counter uh, circuit in a single block you could have a set amount of tokens that can be handed out so you can have multiple trains in the area but only up to a certain number uh, so once the all the tokens have been handed out it will stop anything from entering the area until a token is handed back and can be handed out to a different train so the way this works is simply that we have a check-in point and a checkout point for every entrance and exit into the area. So all of these uh, are identical. Uh, and the check-in consists 
well, both the check-in and check-out consists of a detector and a controller box. Now, for the check-in, the controller box is linked to these three uh, receivers here. So we have this one is connected to this receiver here. So when a train passes by here, a pulse is sent out to this block here, and this will uh, this will turn off the circuit here or turn on the circuit here, which will check out the token. Now, when the token is checked out, like it is right now, it powers this controller box here, which is linked straight across to this receiver box here. And here we have a familiar interlock setup where we have three interlocks, one for each entrance, and they are connected to better show over here where there aren't any trains. We have a locking track set to train mode, of course, with a detector underneath it pointing to a controller box with a receiver box on top. And the controller box have been inverted so the default is red, redstone aspect is green, and the controller is linked to one of the um, interlock boxes. The interlock box is then linked back to the receiver box. So the token acts as an override similar to this is where the signal from the block signals would go in in the other um, intersection control system. So when the token is checked out, the interlocks are overridden so they all go red and that keeps anything else from entering the um, the intersection in this case until the token is handed back when the override turns off and the interlocks of course keep multiple trains from slipping in at a time since only one of them can be on at a time I've gone over how the interlock boxes work more in more detail in other earlier videos there is one problem with the setup though as you can see right now we have two locomotives sitting right here now I'm going to let this locomotive into the intersection even though the token is already handed out by overriding this uh, receiver box quickly and you'll see the problem right there and the problem of course is that both of these were let in at the same time because they were tailgating and the reason for this is because of this system here when the first locomotive enters here the token isn't handed out quick enough for this to turn off before the second locomotive, the green one, has already escaped this locking track. And it doesn't matter which mo if I set this to the single mode, the non-train locking mode, it will still get in. This isn't a problem, however, if the uh, if the trains have more than one or isn't just a locomotive so unless you're running just the locomotives around for some reason this is going to work fine So we are going to stop the red and the green one here until they are tailgating again. And then let them both pile up at this locking track here. As we do now. And because of the distance that this cart puts between the locomotives, the token 
is handed out before this locomotive uh, gets to the locking track and thus is not allowed in. So, like I said, if you have, unless you're running uh, just the locomotives around your track for some reason, this is going to work fine. Um, I have not found, I uh, I tried to work out a workaround for this issue but couldn't find one. You can see an attempt here. Um, but yeah, so this is pretty simple. I'm going to put on the trackman's goggles so you can see the connections if you like. Uh, I tried putting this in the air above the intersection to make the lines easier to follow. They kind of jumbled together when they were all uh, on the same level. Um, but it's, I think it's a pretty straightforward setup. Now, additionally, we have this little experiment here. And I tried putting this on the check-in uh, side to perhaps fix the single train or s single cart issue. Uh, but it didn't work. What it might do, on the other hand, is be, is, it's, is be useful on the checkouts. So, the checkout happens as soon as the tr uh, the locomotive, the first cart, reaches this detector. So, they will instantly hand back the token. Now, if I had very long trains, like six carts or so, the token would be handed out when the locomotive is here. But there would still be a cart back here, which would be on its way out. But still, that might cause problems depending on how far apart the entrances and exits are. Um, so, to help with this, you could put this setup here on uh, each of the exits or just the ones where there is a problem. Because this circuit here makes it so that instead of powering or sending out a signal when the detector is first triggered, it only sends out a pulse once it turns off. So you can see that this is a combination of a pulse former and an inverter. So we, we are inverting the signal here and then this is just a pulse former. So once this detector turns off, it will send out a two tick or if uh, it might be a four tick pulse. I'm not sure what the, no, it's a two tick. You can see it says in the NEI box up top. Uh, it sends out a two tick pulse when the detector is turned off. So it won't do anything when the locomotive gets here. But once the last cart in the train leaves, it sends out a pulse. So it won't hand back the token until the entire train has passed by the detector, which might be useful, like I said, if you have long trains that you don't want to still be in the area when the token is handed back to avoid collisions. So that's pretty much it um, for this. This here is also a pulse former. Um, which might not be necessary. I'm not entirely sure. Don't actually know if it does anything. We can try disabling it there and see if everything still works. Uh, I think it was also a an attempt to fix the single cart issue when there was just a train. Seems it doesn't change anything. So you don't really need the 
um, this pulse former. But yeah, so this is a way to do a token setup when you don't want to use a lot of block signals. Now, this concept has been planned to be implemented in Railcraft as a new uh, a new signal block. And by signal block, I mean I mean a uh, a blockhead uh, one of these, which would act kind of like this, but probably be more reliable because it wouldn't have the problem like this one has. Um, but that might still be a while before that happens. Um, and I don't think it's a priority anyway, but it's something that has been discussed and might happen sometime in the future. But here's a way to do it with the currently available uh, components anyway. So with that, I will see you in the next video.